10. Watch by mistakes that you need to avoid. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Watch buying mistake number one is not buying the watch that you want. And instead, you're pressured into buying the watch that other people want to see you wear. Your choice may not be popular. And this is the hard thing. A lot of people want to buy, okay, this one, a lot of people are buying. It's popular. They say it's a great investment. I'm going to go with it. They get that watch. And then they try, they're like, ah, I don't really, it doesn't sing to me. No, you need to find what sings to you and then ignore what everyone else is saying. Wear it and enjoy the watch. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing you some beautiful timepieces. If you like what you see, you wanna grab any of these watches, they can all be found over at Movement Watches. I'm linking to them down in the description. Movement Watches is the paid sponsor of today's video, guys. And for two years, I've been using their watches. They're a great deal. Go check them out. They've got a wide variety of watches. And down in the description, I've got a discount code. Use it or lose it. It's not gonna be around forever and you wanna take advantage of this great deal. Watch buying mistake number two, not buying an everyday wear watch early on and instead buying something that's really flashy, something that draws a lot of attention to itself, which those watches are fine, but not early on. You want something that can be dressed up, something that can be dressed down, something that is versatile. This watch right here, it works really well for me because I love silver. I've got my silver wedding ring. I've got other silver, you know, cufflinks. It can be dressed up. It can be dressed down. Now, this watch in particular is out of Movement Watches 40 millimeter collection, and it's known as the silver. It's a beautiful watch that I've had almost two years. I wear it quite a bit and I can dress it up, dress it down, and it's exactly what I said. It's an everyday wear, which gets you used to wearing watches. Watch buying mistake number three, not experimenting with the strap. Have fun with the watch strap, guys. It's an easy way to add life, to add color, to have a lot of fun. So the strap has a big effect on the perceived formality of the watch. So let me give you some options out here. This one, it is the Voyager Slate for movement. And look at that like nice mesh metal band, very beautiful. It's going to from, you know, be overall look like a very nice watch that you could wear with maybe a sports jacket, pair of jeans, pair of boots, uh, maybe Chelsea's. But the overall look of this, it can still be dressed down. Now this next watch is actually from the same family over at Movement, it's called the Desert. So the strap right here, this fabric in a light color, what does it do compared to that last watch that I just showed you? All we really did was change out the strap and it becomes a much more casual type of looking watch. Next up, we've got the silicone strap, a very casual strap that comes out of the sports environment. Basically, the silicone strap is all about durability. This is something that can get wet again and again, isn't going to affect it versus leather, versus some of the other straps out there They could actually be damaged over time and crack. Silicone straps are not going to have that issue. Next up, we've got leather bands. And leather bands can be formal, they can be casual. Depends on two factors, the color and the overall style and build of the leather band. So this leather band right here is going to be casual. The color is a lighter color, so that's going to make it more casual. And then the band build is going to be thicker, heavier built. So this right here is going to be something going to be much more casual. On the other side of the spectrum, a dress watch that's using a black colored leather band, that would be something more formal. Watch buying mistake number four, buying a watch that's too large for your wrist. Depending on the size of your wrist, when you look at the case size, this case right here is a 45 millimeter. This case right here is a 40 millimeter. Now for my size wrist, which is 6.5, I can tell you the 40 millimeter is just gonna look more proportioned. It's just simply gonna rest better. You should understand what's the size of your wrist, what is going to be recommended, and then when you know that rule, you can break it. Watch buying mistake number five, buying a watch as an investment versus buying a watch as something that you're going to enjoy and you're going to wear. So if you are a professional watch investor and flipper, well, you can ignore my advice because you know what you're doing. But most of us are not professionals and we'll be talking with people on a forum, in a group, and someone will say, oh, that's an awesome deal. Well, you're looking to buy a watch, you should jump on it. And you jump on it and you don't even like the watch. It's not something you would wear and guess what? You can't flip it. It, it is hard to sell. Prices have gone down. If you're a professional, of course, yeah, do what you do. But for the rest of us, do not invest in watches as an investment. Watch mistake number six, spending money that you don't have to buy a watch that you don't really need. Now, it's cool to have a few watches and I definitely enjoy watches, but you don't want to be going into credit card debt. You want to budget, you want to save up, you want to be able to spend money on a watch that you've earned and that when you buy it, it's not going to negatively affect anything else in your life. 
Watch buying mistake number seven, only sticking with one brand. Yes, I know we've all got certain watch brands that we know of and we trust, but you should look at some of the other lesser known brands, some of the up and coming watch brands. Oftentimes you're going to find a great deal there. It's going to be something they're making a unique design. If you like the watch, why not experiment? Why not try something new? Watch buying mistake number eight, discounting a quartz movement because it's a quartz movement. Now, manual automatic watches, I love them. Self-winding watches, they're beautiful pieces of art, but quartz movements serve a purpose. And for a lot of people on a budget, it's a great entryway for those that want more accurate time telling. Guess what? Quartz is where it's at. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Watch buying mistake number nine, not working with a seller that you can trust. It has you covered for at least a year, preferably longer, 24 months would be nice. Also, you want to make sure that, hey, that if you call them, if you want to engage with them, they've got at least some customer service. So, if you need help, if you have an issue with your watch, you can get assistance. Watch mistake number 10, not wearing the watches that you own. And arguably, this gets harder as your watch collection grows. You get 20, 30, 40, 100 different watches. Yes, how do you wear all these different watches? Well, the answer is, guys, you start to wear about four to five watches on one arm, four to five on the other. I'm kidding here, guys. The point I want to hit with here is if you're going to spend good money on a watch, try to wear it, enjoy it, build memories with that watch. All right, gentlemen, now it's your turn. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Which watch buying mistake did I forget? What would you have added to this video? What would you have changed up to make it better? And guys, don't forget, go check out Movement. I'm linking to them down in the description. Awesome company, wide selection of watches. Use that discount code. I'm putting it down there. Use it or lose it, guys. That's it. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.